I uh, wrote a poem for you. I watched a great blue heron take off on silent wings across the swamps of the Seven Rivers Valley. I stopped mid-stride, stunned to see such signs of life. In that one long second, I contemplated where I am and where I want to be. I laughed that a bird could send my thoughts spiraling. In that stilted avian, I saw freedom and seduction, that I had wings to fly and no responsibilities to mind. Even just watching that heron glide away elicited a sigh of relief. But let me preface, please. I'll shower you in context to put your mind at ease. I was born the youngest daughter of a wealthy, white-skinned, white-collar man and his petite, sensitive wife. I was born 12 days late, or six years, depending on how you count. I was born Laurel Grace Bush. Undeserved gift from God, much anticipated and terribly unexpected. I was born into a world of contradiction, and it was into this world that I have staked my claim. You know, I used to think that I was singularly a product of my dad, but as time goes on, I see that there is more and more of my mom in there. My mouth, anatomically speaking, is relatively normal. Pink lips part in a crooked smile from my mama that displays the small straight teeth that I got from my dad. My tongue is short and tied, but despite its meager size, I've had no trouble opening hearts and minds, eyes and ears with my contagious smirks and sneers. My teeth are piercing fangs. I chomp synonyms and chew syllables like I was chowing on Chex Mix as part of a balanced breakfast. Someday I hope to be as eloquent as my mama. She sings metaphors and smiles similes with crooked, happy teeth. It's been years since I fit on my mother's lap, but I still yearn for her hand on my back, rubbing away the fear and anxiety that I carry every day. But here's the thing, right? If I were a bird or a heron or a crane, all those things that make me crazed, they're mundane to an avian king. Why fret about work and stress when there is this whole blessed natural world just outside of the rigid walls that we box ourselves into? And I guarantee you, it is far less concerned with your TPS reports and productivity charts. It's cathartic, I think, to remember that there is more out there than your bad hair days or feeling fat days or feeling the weight of the world crushing down on your shoulders days. After all, at the end of the day, after all the work is done and you collapse on your bed for one second, hey, relax a little bit. Take a deep breath and release it. Stress gets pent up in our bodies. In my body, it manifests as a fist, clenching my heart. I can't breathe proper. I can't relieve the pressure. Overwhelmed and seemingly underappreciated, in those moments, I want to fly from everything that pins me down, pins my wings to the page that we call obligation. And please, don't get me wrong, responsibility makes the world turn and mature is the man who says what he'll do and does what he says. But humans are more than animatrons. We are more than mindless machines working tirelessly for what seems like the greater good. No, humans have spirits and souls that yearn for meaning and magic. On that fateful day in mid-October, I ran headlong from every responsibility. Fear and anxiety drove me far from my familiar world, and I found myself standing in the middle of a swamp in the Seven Rivers Valley. I heard to my left the whisper of wings extending, and I turned just in time to see a great blue heron glide off into the wilderness. I was jealous at first. Why must I spend my life vying for a spot amongst the glorified few when all that great heron knew or cared about were wind currents on the Mississippi? I missed my mom. She who has always been there to carry me, my mother, my heron. With expansive wings, she would envelop me in her embrace and take away the fear 
and the stress and the anxiety that I momentarily couldn't face. I saw that then in that swampy river basin that adulthood is learning how to cope without those crutches. I will always be grateful to my parents who raised me to be a strong, independent woman and who still love and treasure me now that I'm their youngest son. But there comes a time when a man must find new ways to pause his hectic life. Mom can't always be there. Maybe she shouldn't be. In times such as these, I encourage you to leave these lands of man and seek out nature. Take your van to a park or park it in a mossy glen. Maybe bring some paper and a pen and you too, in the silence, can find your heron blue and great, to take your mind to a calmer place, if only for a moment's pause. Try it sometime when the stress rises, if only for a moment's pause, if only for your mother's sake. Thank you. <laughs>